Hello friends and welcome back to Generation Pixel and if you're new to the channel well a special welcome to you too because we're just about to do another A to ZX of the spectrum. That's correct, it's another selection of 8-bit microcomputer classics all the way from the 80s so if you're looking forward to seeing what the letter O is going to throw at us then you just wait until after these titles. First up for the letter O we're going to look at O Mummy and the reason to go with O Mummy well it was just an easy way to show an example that even back in the early days of video games we were still subjected to shovelware. Now O Mummy was released in 1984 by Amsoft and Amsoft were pretty notorious when it came to shovelware and O Mummy itself was often found as a pack-in game alongside the likes of Disco Dan and other shovelware for the ZX Spectrum and 8-bit micros of the time. Now let's have a look at the game itself because from a historic point of view it's quite interesting because this style of gameplay where you move a cursor or character around a, a game screen to essentially fill in blocks is one that's not really went away either. Now granted most games with this style of gameplay will be relegated to freemium mobile games but this was 1984 and you were expected to pay for this type of game up front in full. Now of course there are some interesting gameplay aspects to this. Well each of the orange boxes on screen well they represent a room within the pyramid and if your daring character makes his way around each four sides of the room well it highlights what's in that room. Now the rooms of course can contain nothing but there are special items within these rooms. There's a scroll which makes you invulnerable to well one hit from one of the mummies that's chasing you around the pyramid. The the majority of the rooms however are treasure rooms and this is how you increase your score. Of course on occasion you'll come to a room that has a mummy inside it itself and this will chew its way out of the room and start chasing you around the maze. And in the last two rooms well you have the important items. You have the tomb which you need to discover five of to end the game and of course the key which allows you to leave that level of the pyramid and move on to the next one. Now would I recommend anyone playing Old Mummy now in 2021? Well probably not because it's a very basic game and as I said it's essentially shovelware but it is a style of gameplay that has managed to survive this length of time as well albeit with improved graphics and sounds and well add-ons that the mobile phone companies will charge you through the teeth for. Well other than that no just leave old mummy buried in a tomb like it should be as the gameplay is and move on to more interesting titles in the 8-bit microcomputer era. Old Mummy from Amsoft in 1984 Second up from the letter O we have On Q Snooker from Mastertronic in 1987. And why are we looking at a snooker game I can hear you ask? Well that's quite simple because since the dawn of video games there has always been a sports title. I mean the very first commercial video game, well it was table tennis and obviously that was going to have such an impact on gaming that sports were always going to be a mainstay of video gaming. Now on cue snooker, well it's an early snooker game and for all of the North American viewers out there, snooker is well, it's the thinking man's pool. Now like many of the other sports titles on the 8-bit microcomputers, on cue snooker, well it wasn't one of the best but they did do incredibly well with the limitations of the hardware that they were working on. The sheer complexity of the physics of the balls themselves was enough to boggle the mind but you also have to take into consideration that they actually put in the mechanics required to put spin onto the cue ball as well as an adjustable power bar for the strength of the shot. And as for the game playing on cue snooker, well it's next level level difficult. And the reason for that, well it's quite simple, unlike the modern pool and snooker games that would come later down the line, there was no indication of where your ball was going to go next. You had a cursor to determine which direction your cue ball was going in, you could choose what spin you were going to apply and then of course what power. But after that it was all down to the physics of the game. 
There were no handy indicators showing where your shot was going to go or where your cue ball was going to go next. You simply had to get good and learn the game. Now of course you could play against a computer, but the true beauty of this game and most of the games like this back in the day, well they were couch competition. You and your best buddy could sit down, play a game of snooker and all from the comfort of your own couch. Now would I recommend that you sit down and play on cue snooker with your buddy today or even yourself against a computer and the answer to this is going to be yes and that is simply because of the difficulty level of this game. This is a game that you truly need to spend time with to understand how the physics work and how to play the game. And as frustrating as that can get at times, it is one of the reasons that you will keep coming back to it. On Q Snooker from Master on It Games in 1987. Third up for the letter O, we're going with Un Oki, the 1984 outing from Arctic Computing. Now once again for the North American viewers I probably have to bring them up to speed. The Oki is the distance line in which a darts player must stand behind while making his throws. And as you've already guessed, well I hope you've already guessed, On The Oki was a darts simulator game. Now of course the ZX Spectrum was a very British computer and darts of course is a very British sport. So there was absolutely no doubt at some point darts was going to make it onto the 8-bit home micros in the form of a game. Now On The Oki is certainly a very early example of a darts game and for that reason, well it's not a very good one. But on the A to ZX of the spectrum, I can't just focus on the good games. Every now and again, we've got to look at maybe one of the, the bad games or at least the early games that weren't quite there yet. But don't worry if you're a darts fan because there were far better darts games coming on the ZX spectrum and they weren't too far down the line either. Now I say on the Oki is a bad game, but that's that's not fair because the developers did try to put together a fairly decent darts game. But I think because no one had really done anything like this before, they weren't quite sure where to start. So the game playing on the Oki went like this. First you would choose the weight of your dart. And the weight of your dart would obviously impact the throw. Now to throw the dart itself it was simple. There was an X axis and a Y axis. And what you had to do was decide whereabouts on the X and Y axis you were going to aim for and then throw the dart. It was as simple as that. Once you had selected these two coordinates and released your dart, you would see on the dartboard where the dart landed and you would adjust your next throw accordingly. Now of course they definitely put some random number generators in there because despite how well you seem to be aiming and how many times you hit the same place, every now and again the game would throw you a curveball and your aim would be totally off. Now on the positive side of the game, well it was another two player couch competition game. This one however didn't quite keep your attention quite as well as we saw in On Cue Snooker. And as for recommending someone playing this today, well only if you're a true fan of darts and dart games because there's much better games out there for the system. On the Oki from Arctic Computing in 1984. For the fourth game in the letter O, I thought I'd spice things up and go for some classic arcade action and it's Operation Wolf, titles 1987 classic in all its spectrum glory. Now of course we've seen some arcade games ported to the ZX Spectrum before, such as Commando, Akari Warriors and Jackal, but where those previous games didn't quite make the mark, well, Operation Wolf in the ZX Spectrum is one of the better examples. It's not arcade perfect, not by any stretch of the imagination, but it does play really well. Again we can see the use of a monochromatic screen, well a monochromatic gameplay screen because on the right hand side of the screen where you have your ammo, your life, your enemies, hostages, all the relevant information, well that's a a host of different colours. The monochromatic game screen however, well it doesn't distract from the game at all. Sure it would be wonderful to have bright, vivid, vibrant colours throughout the game, but that was just never going to happen in the ZX Spectrum. But what the game really needed was smooth gameplay, and smooth gameplay is what this port delivered. And let me tell you, being able to play Operation Wolf at home without having to throw coin after coin into an arcade machine, well in 1988 when this game was released in the Spectrum, that was a thing of wonder. And as for recommending someone now to play the ZX Spectrum port, well absolutely because you just have to play every port of this game you can get your hands on and that is Operation Wolf from Taito in 1987.
for the last entry in the letter O, we're looking at Orbiter, and I'm kind of saving the best for last, well the best for last for me, despite this being a game from 1982, one of the earliest we've looked at in the 80s RX of the spectrum, this was one of the games that absolutely captivated me as a 10 year old. You have to understand that back in 1982 and 1983, well the arcade was still king, and although yes, games machines were creeping their way into the home, a lot of our time gaming was still firmly in the arcades. And a game that I both absolutely adored and absolutely fascinated me was the Defender. So when Silversoft released Orbiter, which is, let's face it, it's a Defender clone, I don't think I could have been happier as a 10 year old. Now don't get me wrong, it doesn't run quite as smooth as Defender did in the arcades, but none of the games did. But it was close enough, but so close in fact it was probably the first game that ever totally immersed me in the gameplay. I can even remember vividly to this day, being a 10 year old and so engrossed in this game that hours would just fly by. And if there ever was a mark of a truly great game, well that's it right there. And from what was essentially a budget title on an 8 bit microcomputer, well for me, this game had it all. Any corners that were cut from the arcade version, well I just didn't notice them at the time. And it'll be forever on my all time favourite games list for the ZX Spectrum, Silversoft's Orbiter from 1982. So there you have it my friends, another selection of 8-bit masterpieces from the ZX Spectrum era, well certainly a couple of masterpieces as far as I'm concerned anyway, and if you want to talk about any of these games today, well drop down there in the comments because that's what the comments are for when YouTube, you know, doesn't delete them randomly, but I will get back to you if you do manage to send a comment, and of course if you've liked this video, why don't you drop me a thumbs up, because one, it's good for the channel, and two, well, it makes me feel all warm and fuzzy inside too. If you want to see more videos like this in the future and of course the other things that I put out there in the world of YouTube, well the subscription button is always there, it's always free and you can always change your mind. Thank you again for watching and until next time, cheerio!